Hello, 3Designers. I'm Joshua St. John, 3Design NYC on the forum, and welcome back to the newest edition of the video demonstration series. I'm very excited about this demonstration. It's the longest and most ambitious I've ever embarked upon. This is all made possible by our new video hosting service, so um, we're not going to waste any time and we'll just hop into the 3Design workspace. All right, and so we are off. Um, you guys know where the pause button is. Hope you have this split onto two screens. One screen with three design, the other screen, the video demonstration series. Um, people have been asking for more complicated constructions, and uh, we listen. So here we go. File save as. We're going to call it Pave Solitaire. First step, make a sketch front view plane. Going to drop a ring size 6 in the center. Validate that. I'm going to leave the sketch and I'm going to go back into the solid module and all the way to the jeweler's bench and put a stone in. We're going to have this stone be, I don't know, custom diameter. No, carat weight will do 1.5. It's virtual jewelry, so we might as well make it bling, right? I'm going to bring it all the way up to the top, basically where I want it to sit off the finger and validate there. And now I'm just doing this for a visual. Um, we're going to go back into the sketch by double-clicking on the ring, and I'm going to use the uh, vertical symmetric tool and unclick close and trace out my shank with five control points. All right, I'm going to turn my grid snaps on by hitting G. You should all know how to set that up. If not, time to go back and watch Welcome to 3Design. Um, so I want to set this top point here at 6.5. That's going to make the, uh, when I'm done, that's going to make the top of my ring be uh, 13 millimeters across. Big old flashy pave ring. Turn grid snaps back off. I just wanted to set that point, and now I'm going to go in and kind of finish out the ring shank basic shape. Uh, I want it to be about two millimeters thick at the bottom. If your grid does not look like mine, again, go look at Welcome to 3 Design and come back to this one later. All right, so yeah, that, that's about the shank that I want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop in a cross section now. I'm going to turn my grid snaps on to do that. Validate and go one, two, three, one, two, three. You guys should be getting used to seeing the cross sections. This is very one, two, three sweepy, this part of the activity. So, again, one, two, three sweep, another video demonstration series. You should all go and watch if you haven't seen it. Going back into my ring in the profile, I am going to put an opening angle of, let's say, 70 degrees, and voila, validate. All right, I'm going to click on my curve, and I'm going to move it off of the Z to, let's go, I don't know, 2. Validate. Now, you should all know the next step. I'm going to leave the sketch. I'm going to mirror the curve in 3D in the solid module and the reason I do that is insert your answer here the reason I do that is now this yellow curve is parametric to the white so if I adjust this point let's say I move it this way recompute the other curve follows suit. If I had mirrored it within the sketch it wouldn't do that. I'm going to hit control Z, undo, recompute comes back. All right. Back into the solid module. One, two. Those are my path curves. Three, compression curve. Sweep. I'm going to hit path auto orientation, even though some uh, members of the community don't like rebuilding within the function. Um, in this case, I think it'll work nicely. Validate. Now, looky here. This curve, this section, is being resized to the paths. Why is that? Because in a two-rail path, in a two-path sweep, 
the cross section is sized in one direction by the paths. In a three path sweep, the cross section is sized in all directions by the path. So the size of the cross section is dictated by the points on these path curves. You guys follow? Hope so. Validate. And there we are. I'm actually going to go back in and change it to 18 karat gold. I like modeling in gold visually. And there we go. We got the basic shank. All right. Next up, I'm going to put in the beginnings of what will become the head. So I did, uh, I'm hiding some stuff just to give me a better view. So I did a three rail sweep for the shank and for the head I'm actually going to do a revolve because it's round. I'm going to turn my grid snaps on, they are on, and I'm going to put, uh, we'll start right around here. Stone I think is going to need to come up a little bit. Put in like one, two, and three points. Is that four points? That's four points with the uh, NURBS curve. Okay, I, I do want to measure as well uh, something right now. So I'm going to use my segment tool to measure and measure from right here, let's say, where the ring will be about to the top of the stone. Six millimeter. Six millimeter off the finger. I want to have, I'm going to show my ring size actually right now. You see how it's open? I don't want that. I'm going to put a second ring in like that. And I'm going to rename that just so you guys see it. We'll call it uh, cutter ring. All right. And then I'm going to offset that curve by one millimeter in the outward direction. And I end up with a curve like that. I can hide the ring cutter. You guys will see where this is go going in a minute. Just trust me for the time being. I'm going to go like that, and I'm going to mirror that in the sketch across the center plane. 2D sketches can be a little finicky, so I'm going to select the plane first, not any of the curves. Hit mirror. The plane comes in, and then hit the plus sign, and boom, across like that. All right, so let's show my uh, show that stone again. I think I want to bring that up a little bit. So double click on it brings me out of the sketch, and I'm going to bring it up to right about let's call it 13.5 on the Z and validate. All right, now I'm going to finish that uh, the revolve curve, and I'll do that by. something like this bring this over to zero like that and that over to zero now I'm going to select that curve that curve that curve and that curve and I'm not gonna do auto connect no because I don't want to connect everything on the plane I'm going to do join curves so now this is a nice closed curve and with that I'm gonna leave the sketch and revolve it around the, I believe, OZ, yes, OZ axis, and there we go. Okay. So this is all very rough at this point. I'm setting up my puppet strings. I'm setting up the curves that I'll later refine to my manufacturing standards. So uh, next thing, I'm going to show you a tool you guys probably don't use a lot. It's called Shell. Um, it does have some limitations, but in this case, I know it's going to work. Um, I'm going to make the wall thickness 0.9 and watch what it does. Boom. Awesome. I'm going to cut and delete just so you guys can see fully what the shell did. My, my wall thicknesses are exactly 0.9 on this uh, on this uh, body and it's a solid. Um, 
I said it had limitations. It does. I'm not going to get into what those are now. They all make sense. Uh, once you start using it, you'll get what it will shell and what it won't shell. So feel free to experiment around with that. And if you have any questions, um, a lot of you are participating on the por forum. A lot of you still aren't. We have 2,600 hits on YouTube, and uh, the forum activity is definitely picking up, and we just want to see that continue. So uh, if you have questions about Shell, get up on the forum, ask. I'm going to use the cutter ring now, and do you see how I did that? I just hold Control and selected it out of the tree. I don't even need to select it from the workspace. Choose Crop and Punch, and boom, cropped out. Looks good. So now, what were these curves I drew before? I'm going to hide everything. And I'm going to show this curve, this curve, and the offset circle. And lastly, I'm going to show the crop and punch. I'm going to take my segment tool, and I'm going to go from right to a little low, bring it up to there, bring it up to there. Um... Yeah, no, that looks good to me. Maybe that's a little small. Let's see about going up a little farther. All right, so I'm going to leave that like so, but I'm going to show my revolve curve again. And the revolve curve is there. Check this out. This is what I meant by puppet strings. I want to move this up ever so slightly, so I'm going to bring it up by 0.5. I left room here, um, so I'll validate that and recompute. Now I'm happier. So I'm going to hide, no, I'm going to hide the uh, revolve curve and I'm going to use my trim tool and now trim off all the parts of this curve that I don't want. I'm going to be cutting out the gallery. Um, well, I, I guess not the gallery, the side gallery, uh, and using that later. So I'm going to do a join again, not an auto connect. Leave the sketch and crop and punch this middle section out with a crop. There we have it. The beginning of our ring. All right, guys, so let's, uh, let's work on the shank. I'm going to hide the head for the time being, and we're going to take a good look at the shank. Let's show my, all my shank curves, if we can remember what those are. It was the ring one. It was the curve one, and it was the mirror. And yes, and it was also the cross-section. I'm going to double-click on the cross-section, which brings me back into my shank or I mean into my sketch, and uh, make a copy of that. Let's bring it down, I don't know, negative 4 should be good, and keep original, validate. All right, so I'm going to turn this shape into an oval, like that. Looks perfect. I'm going to double-click, uh, I don't know if that looks perfect. Let's try, no, I don't yeah, that's better. So bring that down there, and that there, I think. Yeah, that's much better. Notice they're different sizes. Again, doesn't matter because inside a three-rail sweep, it will be resized. So my first cross-section is here. I'm going to go to my Sections tab, hit the plus sign, hit the hand, hit the hand, Grab the hand, and we're going to position it down here at the bottom. We have two cross sections. Oh, excuse me. It needs to be that one. Okay, we have two cross sections. Square, oval. Now, from here to here, it's transitioning to an oval, and as you see, as it comes around, it stays oval. Now, that's not what we want, obviously, so the way I'm going to solve that is not within the sweep. It is cut and delete. And I'm just going to mirror this guy over like so to give me a visual. All right, so I want to put some stones down the side of this shank. So I'm going to make a temporary sketch. 
Um, and I'm just going to kind of lay out the way I want my stones to look. Um, 1.5, that's a 3 millimeter stone. I'd say the biggest stone that I want is going to be a 2.8 millimeter. Um, so we'll do radius of 1.4. That gives me the 2.8, and I'm just going to pull it off of the Z um, in the same direction as where my master curves are, so that would be this way probably. Validate, and now I'm going to double click on this curve, curve 1, and that will bring me into the curve 1 sketch, and I have all my control points here. So now I can use my control, um, the bottom of the ring I want to be 3 millimeters across, so I'll change the Z to 1.5, and then this one I'll change to 1.8, this one I'll change to 1.9, and this one I actually I want it to flare out on the top, I'll go like that with. Maybe that needs to come into 1.8 as well. This will come down to 1.7 and recompute, see what that looks like. Nice. And you notice it did both sides because I have the mirror. Yeah, so I'm just going to hide that circle and uh, I think I'm I think I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Now um, I, I need it to blend into the head obviously so let's look at what we got going on here. From the top view um, it's on 6.5 we want that to be 6.5 so yeah that's fine. How, how am I going to adjust that then? Let's try this. Let's adjust the cross section like so. What's that going to do? Very cool. But you see down here, it, it's a little wide. So how do I fix that? I'm going to bring it over like so, like so, like so, and it'll cut in now. So when I recompute this, see how it cuts down? That's what I want to happen. So I'm happy with everything I have so far, and I'm about to do some pretty complicated stuff. I'm going to copy a face, take that face. From there, I'm going to take that face, and I'm going to do a multi-bulge. You guys should know what that tool is now. Um, if not, it's a great tool. I use it all the time. I'm going to bring it out to, like, let's say, 3 on the Z. I just want it to be big. It doesn't matter how big. Now let's see. Oh. Perfect. It came out with no errors. If it had come out with an error, um, an exclamation point, you can always go back and try changing the number of points to like 150. But in this case, I didn't need to do that. So now, this is the tricky stuff that I was just talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide everything. And we're going to do some... Uh, in, in the last training class, we, uh, we talked about using the tree. And we coined a new term trigonometry. So I'm about to uh, pull off some advanced trigonometry here and uh, I'm going to look at my cut, crop, and punch, all right? Now within that I have a shell, right? I'm going to bring that back as a reference object like that. So that's my shell. Underneath my shell I have the revolve. I'm going to bring that back as a reference object. Now I want to do a Boolean subtraction of the revolve, the shell from the revolve. So now Boolean subtract. Now I have the inner part of the shell. Okay? And with that, I'm going to take the multi bulge. And here, and I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save before I pull this one. I'm going to Boolean these two together. Addition. Perfect, no exclamation points. And then I'm going to Boolean subtract that center piece out. And I end up with this nice match here. 
Now, I'm not 100% pleased with this. So let's look at this gap here. So let's look at that curve one and see if, how we can fix that. Um, it may need to be fixed in the cross section. So, but I think perhaps I need to bring this it's at 6.5 like we set in the beginning. Let's let's bring that over to negative 6 and see if that fixes it. And this is what I meant by puppet strings. Now I can adjust things to get my flow just right. Now that, that's okay, but you see in the center I'm having this uh, this issue. It's uh, a couple couple of issues here. So let me try recomputing this. See what that does. Okay, now we're getting better. Now we're getting better. I think if I bring this point out to, like, split the difference, negative 6.3, recompute. Yeah, that, that, that looks good to me. It will, it will look even better as I continue on as well. All right, so um, let's leave the sketch and take a look at everything we have so far. I'm going to hide the sketch. I'm going to show the mirror. And actually, here's some more uh, trigonometry. I'm going to double click on this mirror. If you look, the mirror was the cut and delete. Now, if I hit the hand and click on the Boolean, this Boolean operation, Recompute. Now it switches it. The difference between that and adding another mirror is I've replaced it in the old mirror, so I haven't added any file size or, or another step to my tree. This is tree optimization. So I don't know if you guys just got what I did, but I'll undo it. Edit, undo. As of right now, this mirror is the cut and delete. Let me hide this. If I bring a reference object back of the cut and delete, remember that shape? Okay. So now, I don't need that. I'm going to show my Boolean operation. Double click back on the mirror. The mirror is the cut and delete. I'm going to hit the hand, choose the Boolean operation, and there we go. Nice, right? Next up for the shank is the uh, bright cut or the uh, kind of the channel or the place that it's not a true channel, the place that I'm going to set the stones. To get there, I'm going to copy. Um, I'm going to copy that surface and I'm going to hide everything except for that surface. I'm going to use a sweet new V7 tool called Extract UV Curve. That's found right here. If I extract UV Curve, you have two choices, at U and at V. I'm going to choose at U. And if you notice, when I do at U, I can choose a curve anywhere on that surface. So I'm going to show that stone, or the circle, that's my mock stone, and I'm going to position it like so. Validate. And now I can actually delete the surface. I don't need it anymore. And I have this curve, and I will, of course, mirror that curve over like so. And I'm going to double click back on my circle. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw a cross section using the segment tool. I'll go one, two, across, down like so. And now I can auto connect here. Now, just so you guys see where I'm going with this, I'll do the sweep. This is just a two rail sweep, so the depth is set by the cross section. The width is not. Going to choose the cross section. It's upside down. I'm going to flip that 180, like so, and validate. Now, this will become my cutter. I'm going to double click back on the circle, and I'm going to trim my cutter. I'm going to use everybody's favorite tool symmetrical vertical and give myself like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, 
something like that, four or five points. And then I'm going to use that to come through here and trim my cutter using a crop and punch. Boom. See that? Awesome. So now I'm going to hide that sketch. And I'm going to show my Boolean operation. And if you notice here at the top, I'll Boolean it out so you can see what the problem is. Always good to know the problems or recognize them before they happen and solve them. But in this case, I will show you. It's leaving me with this little edge at the top here because the curve was uh, dictated by the surface. So a couple ways to solve that. I think the best one is I'm going to select this surface, copy face, and then use the copy face to do a multi-bulge. Bring the multi-bulge out. Boolean these two guys together. No exclamation point again. Validate. And then Boolean subtract like so. Boom. Nice. Now, I don't like the angle of the cut here. So how do I fix that? I'm going to go back to my sketch, look at the spline. And the uh, best way for me to fix that probably is to take these two points and apply a scale to them. Yes, you can scale points. I'm going to turn off proportional and just go like that. And now when I recompute, it's going to change the angle of the cut. Nice, right? All right, and uh, what about that mirror? Remember what we did a second ago? That mirror is the old Boolean operation. So I can double click on the mirror, and I can switch it to Boolean operation 5, validate. And there we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and save here and uh, hide my sketches.